All right, hello and welcome everyone to an Atlas Builds Refresh. So Atlas is one of the few frames that needs a refresh video, and I also don't feel that he is going to be changing significantly in the huge end of the month patch that we're getting. That's going to change like at least five Warframes builds, and we can make his builds refresh now. He does use one of the things that's going to be changed, but we're going to address that, I think. Uh, with that, Atlas has changed quite a lot over these two years, mostly in that we have a lot of new things to put on Atlas that make him considerably, considerably better. Uh, so for that, first and foremost, the main build has changed to be a lot more ranged focused. And the first thing I'll say here is that I used an Umbral Forma on Atlas, and you don't need to do that for this build, and you probably should not do that for this build. But if you really, really love Atlas... You could also go even further and add another Umbral Forma to have a maxed out Umbral Fiber in here, if you really truly feel that that's correct. Not something that I would suggest considering Atlas's current place. But, in general, we are a very ranged focused build, which might come off a little weird. But the two abilities that we're going to be using most, both his Petrify, which has a nice 35 meter range with this much range, uh, and also his Landslide, which has a nice 5 meter radius, starting with this much range, hugely, hugely benefit from range. The big thing about Landslide that a lot of people don't know, because it's not extremely clearly stated in his stats, is that each of his combo of punches has exorbitantly more range. So whenever you get to his uppercut, that actually hits a very, very large amount of enemies whenever you're built for range. So it is very worthwhile to have kind of at least 200% range. I mean, at the very, very floor, you want to at least be running overextended and a stretch, I would say. Um, or maybe Augur Reach instead of Stretch if you really want the uh, added shields conversion. But other than that, building for range is much, much advised on Atlas. In addition, you can see for our survivability, we're kind of all in. We're on full Umbral, well, almost full Umbral set. Umbral Fiber is here, making these two better. Uh, and we are also on Adaptation. So that is an absolute ton of survivability. In addition, we're also running Arcane Blessing, which whenever this is stacked up is an additional 1,200 HP, which gives us a nice clean 3,020 health at the end. And with our rubble, we're going from the 581 armor we have now up to 2,081 armor. So a huge amount of health and armor. And of course, whenever you're collecting excess rubble, Atlas will just heal off of that. So you don't have to worry about any out of kit healing that you're going to need for this. In terms of the energy economy, we come to the thing that's going to be changed pretty soon here, and that is Nourish. So Nourish is about to get nerfed. It's about to get nerfed from double energy down to 60% more energy, which is not a huge deal. I think it's still going to be very, very usable. Uh, and in this build, it is specifically used as kind of a kickstart for the Atlas engine, let's say, because what we're really trying to do with Atlas is just start up and have enough energy to build up enough rubble to activate Rubble Heap. Whenever Rubble Heap is active, Landslide not only costs no energy, it also does double damage and is twice as fast. This is, of course, absolutely fantastic uh, and is basically the way to make Atlas work because you want to be punching always, and if you want to be punching always, it probably needs to cost you no energy or you have to be, you know, max 175 with, like, Energize and so on and so forth in order to really usually uh, get that to a place where you can just always be punching. In terms of our strength, obviously we have a bunch coming from Umbral Intensify, but we're also using Molt Augmented to get us up to a nice clean 200%. That's of course going to make just basically everything that we're doing better. Uh, obviously it doesn't make Petrify better, but Nourish is more damage, more energy, and then Landslide is of course much more damage whenever we have that on. Uh, and then of course Steel Charge is here, also Landslide. Shocker, I know. Uh, but yeah, this is basically what we're coming to with the Atlas build. For today, because I do know that Atlas is being nerfed, and I think it's important to show off, or not Atlas is being nerfed, Nourish is being nerfed. Uh, Nourish is being nerfed. I think it's important to show off this at a lower strength that you can more expect. So we are going to be nerfing for the show off today. These are just going to come out of this. Just entirely, we're just going to lose uh, just about 50% strength. Uh, and I think that that is going to be fair to say, because we're not only getting, you know, considerably less damage out of Nourish, we're also going to be getting less energy multiplier. This is going to be weaker even than whenever Nourish gets changed by a pretty considerable margin, uh, because of course our health armor uh, and just general damage of our one are all going to go down. But I want to show it off this way so that, you know, you can have confidence that the build will still work whenever things are changed at the end of the month. With that, other very important things for Atlas, the Ceramic Dagger. So, I'm just going to be blunt about this. Uh, Atlas's Landslide, his one, the base stats for Landslide are absolutely terrible. Dreadful. 
garbage even. He has, I believe, 5% crit and 5% status, both of which are not workable at all, which means he has to get by on just purely raw damage. And the fact of the matter is, is that at Steel Path and high level content, it doesn't cut it. It's not good enough. So the Ceramic Dagger is standing in for DE buffing this Warframe by giving us a 30% base crit increase, increasing our crit all the way up to 35%, keeping our statuses and such the same. In terms of the Ceramic Dagger, we're also getting 20 initial combo, which actually doesn't matter at all because Atlas is fantastic at building combo. And that also means that the first buff also really doesn't matter at all. If we do transform this weapon, it would also give us 100% melee damage, which does affect his one. Uh, but I'm not going to be transforming it in this video. This is really... The Incarnan is really actually just a what if Atlas was buffed appropriate to like an appropriate power level for what he probably should be. Uh, and any of the Incarnans that have a significant critical increase can really stand in for this. Obviously, the Ceramic Dagger is the highest one, but if you have like the Magistar or I believe the Bow Incarnan gets like 19% or something like that. Uh, there's a few of them that have like, you know, if you're getting above 15%, it's workable. I think the Nami Solo is in that category as well. Regardless, uh, the Ceramic Dagger is the one you actually want. It's the best one because it buffs you up to a level where he is extremely, extremely good because he gets to use crits. For that, our stat stick is this. So this is just generally what I run for stat sticks uh, with Gladiator Rush being kind of the flex slot. I like the extra combo duration. Um, and of course, obviously the 20% melee critical chance per combo multiplier doesn't hurt either. Uh, and this is quite nice, but if you need a combined elemental, cause this is a pure toxin with corrosive being added with melee exposure. If you wanted to make this a viral instead, especially for like other warframes using the same crit stick, uh, making this viral or more corrosive damage, this could be a lot of different things. The rest of it is pretty set in stone though. Sack steel, blood rush. Prime Pressure Point. Prime Fever Strike is probably going to make it in most of the time, unless you really don't care about elementals, and then you can just rely on exposure for any of that. And then Spoiled Strike, of course, and more critical damage with Gladiator uh, Might and Organ Shatter. Uh, Opportunities Reach doesn't matter at all here, so if you don't have it or don't want to run it and invest the Forma, don't bother. Uh, and, of course, this is adding points, so just whatever you have is fine, because we're not actually really going to be swinging this Ramic Dagger, especially not if it's not a heavy attack. Uh, but, yeah, that's generally what's going on with the Stat Stick. It is just a very good stat stick with the mods because that's all that matters here uh, and it's also simulating a what if atlas got buffed the right way and then in addition to that we are running the grimoire i'm probably not going to have to use it at all but this is also a thing for energy we're also running dexterity here for the extra 10 seconds or seven and a half seconds of combo duration um basically if we really are pressed for energy we could always just fire this into a crowd and it's going to top us off really fast uh, probably not going to be needed. And then in addition to that, we are running Helios with a Tenacious Bond. This is giving us that 1.2 final crit damage multiplier, which is very nice for all Exalted or pseudo-Exalted Warframes uh, to be utilizing. But other than that, uh, he's not going to be doing much for us. You could bring things like Nautilus. Nautilus is, of course, going to be like a grouping uh, that's going to be a little bit helpful for Atlas, but at this amount of range, probably not needed. You could, if you wanted to, actually go a little bit lighter on range in this build, and go more into like energy economy or something if you wanted to do that and actually run Nautilus instead of Helios here for being able to get those groups together into your range. But yeah, that is what we're doing on Atlas. And with the Ceramic Dagger, he is quite a powerhouse having, you know, really not much, if any, trouble with high level enemies, although he does need to build up. Also, in terms of what we're doing in, in this video, with you seeing me punch with Atlas, obviously he is one of the most non-quality of life Warframes in the game, where you need to press one every single time you punch. So uh, for the purposes of that, I have a button that I it just is gonna spam one like this over and over. This is slower than I could spam one if I had to do it manually, but it's not gonna give me carpal tunnel. So I think I prefer that in general. Uh, also, obviously you could see like those enemies, like they don't, they don't really have a chance. Like, you just freeze them in place with your very good range three. Uh, the enemies that aren't frozen, I mean, you're invincible whenever you're punching with your one. So they don't uh, they don't have much of a shot of stopping you, and your damage output is great. Obviously, these are level 200 Steel Path Heavy Gunners, which most people are very unlikely to see. Uh, and this is, like, you know, not even full combo, and it only gets more damage from here. So, yeah, really high damage output. Uh, I do really want to be clear that most of this damage is predicated on the ceramic dagger giving us enough crit to be relevant if you do not have the ceramic dagger or an equivalent you need to use avenger in order for 
Atlas to really do much of anything, but it's really nice to not have to need Avenger to get somewhere with Atlas uh, and use the Ceramic Dagger instead. But yeah, that's that's what's going on with Atlas right now. He's he's punching. He's turning people to stone. And he's punching them. We're going to jump into uh, Steel Path and show it off. He actually has a very, very competitive kill rate. Uh, also, before we jump into the Steel Pathing, because I know a lot of people don't watch that because like they kind of get it after I show it here, uh, I have been considering swapping to showing Netra Cells. I did take this build into some Netra Cells to like test it out, and it worked quite well. Um, but just like, hey, if people want me to do Netra Cells instead of kind of like the usual tab run that we do, let me know. It's something that I could possibly switch to depending on the frame. But yeah, that is what is up. Let's go. Let's go punch some guys. All right. Jumping in, punching some mans. Yeah, uh, as a reminder, this is the, uh, we are down to strength mons to simulate the kind of nerf that we're going to be needing to nourish. But of course, I, it's it's a more extreme number decrease than than we'll actually have. So this is a, a weaker version of the build just to show that the build will still be good without nourish. Or well, without nourish being as strong anyway. See that energy increase at the beginning, which is really the reason we run nourish at all. There's not a whole lot of great options in terms of subsumes for him, because Atlas really does just want his energy economy to be better, um, which is why, of course, we run Rubble Heap as well. Well, the Rubble Heap saying double damage also doesn't hurt. You can see now we're built up to that 1,500, so now all of our punching is a free. So we do not have to use Nourish at all anymore if we don't want to. Uh, I will say one of the things about Atlas and, like, just in, just in general about Atlas, really, is that I really hope he gets a quality of life pass at some point for a couple of different things. That mainly being maybe hold his one in order to like just dash to the nearest target and do his punches because you know having to mash it really is not great ergonomically in pretty much any situation, which is why I'm having to use a macro here to make it comfortable. And obviously. There's solutions for even if you're on console, you can use like the Steam input stuff in order to like, you know, make that not a pain on controller. But just in general, I really feel like he should be changed to uh, be a, li a little more hand uh, comfortable or friendly even, I should say, I guess. But you can see the damage output here is phenomenal. I did lower my rumble though because I was talking. Not too hard to get back with just a couple of punches, though. And then, of course, any enemies that you kill whenever you have your punches free, those are positive energy economy right there. And one of the things that you probably will notice is that if I do not freeze like an Eximus, often they will get punched and like flung away. And one of the other weird things is that he actually cannot use his one on an enemy that is ragdolled, which is strange because his one ragdolls them. But like, if you launch an enemy into the air with a punch, you can't like aim at them and do follow-up punches to them until they're dead because the ragdolling disables your ability to target them which has always been a strange thing obviously you can see that the damage output really doesn't leave much to be desired even at this lower strength and i'm not even turning nourish on unless i need to because i just want to make it very clear that this build will survive the nourish nerf and it will it will handily survive it it still wants to use it but Without it, you're still gonna be okay if you just like if you just have a little bit of the effect, like just right at the beginning of the mission is even enough. Yeah, in testing for this build, like I was actually really, really surprised with how nice it is in terms of like the kill rate on a mission like this. Uh actually doing like kind of competitive numbers with some Saren builds, which is very, very nice, because there's, you know, not a whole lot of Warframes that are keeping up with her. And in terms of the survivability, going all in and, like, using Arcane Blessing and stuff uh, to get, like, the really big health has been really good. But I haven't felt the need uh, for survivability increases. Because, like, between that and Adaptation, we're, you know, essentially doing a Naros-style tanking. But kind of a little better because we're invincible most of the time when we're using our 1. And we should be using our 1 most of the time as well. Yeah, I'm not, not really, like, optimizing, like, which tiles I'm in at all either. I'm... You know, obviously on this you can get like a nice hallway like T section uh, and just zoom up and down it with your punches and get like really optimal kill rates. But I'm, I'm trying to avoid uh, doing that as you can see like just kind of like what he'll generally get kind of no matter what your layout is. 
because this tile is like very not optimal for him. Oh, also, uh, as you are about to plainly see, Acolytes don't like Atlas. They want to go home, and uh, well, they will. There he goes. Yeah, they they don't they don't like it. They mm -mm. they they very much wish for anything else to be the case. Uh, anything but Atlas would be their preference. If I'm honest, they are they are not into it at all. Yeah, you can see there, I wasn't able to target him. A few extra punches on the Eximus here. But yeah, like, I mean, the, da the damage output is very good. Considering, like, there's, there's basically no status being applied here, really. Like, there's technically status that can be applied, but at a 5% rate, with as slow as he swings, this really is just true raw damage situation, which is why it's so good against Acolytes. Because Acolytes, of course, and then, well, you know, a lot of different enemies take significantly reduced status effects. Um, and this is just, like, actually punching through, like, th this level of armor on these enemies and so on and so forth. And, like, the crit damage is just absolutely necessary for that really if you if you don't to rebuild my rubble actually don't get distracted here for a second um if you don't do that then it just takes forever to get to like get through like these basic enemies in steel path obviously in regular path you can kind of build for whatever on atlas and you're gonna punch everything once as long as you have okay uh setups on the stuff that is vulnerable to his one but Really, if you want to bring him into, like, Netracells and, you know, harder content in general, you really got to have an Incarn and Orbi running a set of Avenger. But, in all honesty, I actually think that uh, a set of Avenger is more rare than the Ceramic Tag or Incarn and by no small margin. So, prob probably best to shoot for one and not the other, especially considering the Ceramic Tag is better. I will say, one of the interesting things is D has expressed that they don't like the um stat sticking like they are they're not fans of it which i also tend to agree i think needing a stat stick sucks but i hope if de ever fixes that it's paired with you know the warframes that love using the uh the stat sticks to get like you know this kind of effect and actually like be good and kind of do what the purpose of their warframe is which in atlas's case is punching um Hopefully they would also do like a balance run on uh, this to be like, well, Atlas doesn't have the ability to like get like the ceramic daggers effect anymore, so we've we've buffed his his crit chance to 35 and so on and so forth. Or, like the other Warframes that would be similarly affected. I would hope that would be a thing that would happen if they ever decided to uh, change how that system works. Yeah, health tanking with Atlas has worked out quite well, though. Even whenever you're not, like, just punching uh, between adaptation and, like, all the survivability that you, you've you got here, as long as you're on um, a high amount of your rubble, which, like, anything over a 1,000 probably really is going to do the trick, uh, enemies do have a very, very hard time taking you down. Between you being able to just tell them no and turning them to stone, uh, and, of course, them taking massive damage from the punching, and you being invincible during your one. Hey there, punch. Just one regular punch to the chest. Goodbye. Yeah, if you hate if you hate acolytes, Atlas may in fact be that be your guy. May in fact be your guy if you have if you have the ceramic dagger cuz like you can get away honestly with a lot less on this build. Uh and you can obviously do a lot more. Like in terms of the archon charts, which I just realized I actually didn't even bother mentioning cuz it's not super important for Atlas. Um you, like, I only have one, I have one casting speed shard, regular, and two energy max shards, which are just for comfort. Like, they really don't factor in at all, actually. Um, you could really do a lot more. Like, you could get, like, a full 75% strength, or you could do, like, purple shards for much more melee crit damage. And there's, like, a lot of avenues that you can go down for just a lot of, a lot of power coming out of the shards that I don't really think that Atlas is worth the investment of that right now. Um... Mostly due to, like, his stuff being very finicky. Like, his one not working on, like, you know, a good chunk of enemies. And, oh, I've, got, I got, I've gotten distracted. 
And, and this, this truly is what we needed. Uh, see, survivability wise, we'll use Nourish here. Torrid, just fire a gun a little bit. There we go. We, we have energy again. The dream. I can ignore that. That's just me getting distracted. I didn't realize I didn't have enough rubble. There we go. Now we're back up on rubble. But yeah, like if um, if Atlas got like just like a quality of life pass and one of his two bad abilities, either his two or his four, were made good, I really think he'd be in a like really fantastic spot. Like he he's really that far away from being like great, and he's not bad now, as you can clearly see. He's pretty good. Like he's like a very like good tier Warframe, um, and he he's a very low number of changes from being like great. I would say. Yeah, just like a low amount of quality look. Because if I was on if I was on PlayStation, for example, and like the way to play Atlas was to like, you know, just like hold L1 and just mash X while looking around at the same time. Like I can't think of something less ergonomic than that to do, especially with default controls on PlayStation. So I I would just there's no way I would be doing that. Which really to me just says like quality of life pass like gotta happen on Atlas eventually here, right? Especially whenever we just looked at uh, another Warframe that got a new build, which is Excal, now using his one instead. E Excal auto-targets and just, like, goes for a while on one button press, which is really nice. And if Atlas worked the same way, I don't think much would change. Obviously, he's got, like, his combo of punches, but I don't think anyone would complain if he did that combo of punches to kind of whoever's closest to him all in a row, right? A little more rubble here. Oh, we are at 10 minutes, and we're at about 1274 kills. Yeah, a little, a little bit of overtime on that because it was a was punching man's, but yeah, very, very respectable kill count. Like the time that I let. Oh, we're just gonna get me a third one. I mean, all right, if he wants to be punched that badly, he had to be punched twice. That guy. Yeah, that was a very fast third acolyte. Was that our third acolyte? It feels like it. They disappear so fast when you're Atlas. Like, they just vaporize. So it's sometimes hard to know. But yeah, regardless... I mean, I guess we can check. Yeah, that was our third one. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what Atlas is up to. He's punching dudes. If you are on PC and can set up, like, you know, an easy macro to spam one, fun time. Very survivable with this build. Like, very hard to put down uh, in the vast majority of content. Like I said, I had no problem doing Netracells or anything like that with him. Um... Yeah, good stuff. Really hoping he gets like a quality of life pass. Maybe makes it make his two or his four good. Probably more likely for his two. Because his four is those dumb, dumb rock boys. But, but yeah, good stuff. That's Atlas. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. And I will see you definitely whenever all those buffs and stuff drop. Because it's going to get wild. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. And, of course, as usual, thanks very much to the patrons for supporting the channel. Uh, especially the $10 patrons, Alex Barnum, Andrew, Angel SBM, Arbiter Daydream, Benuvin, uh, Blotomatic, Brandon Coggin, Brutus Salazar, Cano Lathra, uh, Dylan Dworski, Thrain, Afon, James Hartshorn, uh, JC4 Science, John Lobdell, Joshua Adams, Lou Zant, Bigokel, Minty Ginja, Mitchta, Nerve, Remox Today, Ruby, Sharp247, Camarilla Wastelander, The Coupon of Death, Homeworm, Victor Palmer, Wife of Wars Vaudid, and Zerafir. Uh, and of course, thank you very much to all of the $5 and $2 patrons as well. It is much appreciated because I've been asked this a lot. Uh, I am doing the 2024 Warframe tier list, but I need to get last year's data from whenever DE releases that, which hopefully happens on the January dev stream. Uh, but that's what's holding that up because, you know, that kind of factors into Warframes getting S ranks or not. But yeah, that's that's what's going on. Uh, and thanks. Thank you, everybody.